mine iniquity for it is great good morning brothers and sisters we are gathered here this morning to give our thanks for the life of our departed sister Charlene Patricia Boyne on behalf of the entire church family, we want to extend to all of the family at this time our deepest sympathies and assure you that we will continue to bear you up in prayer because we are happy that we have a God who is indeed a present help in time of trouble. So welcome one, welcome all. And we trust this morning that this service will be a blessing to all who are present here. Please bow your heads at this time with me for a word of prayer. Dear Father, this morning as we gather to give you thanks for the life of our departed sister, Charlene, we ask that you will be near to every grieving family member. Put your arms of love around them. Lord, you know the thoughts and the intents of their hearts. You know how they feel. We're glad that you are indeed a very present help in time of trouble. Comfort. And in a way that only you can, give them the peace that passeth all understanding. Today, Lord, they're saying goodbye to a loved one. And we know, Lord, that your heart is touched with the feelings of their infirmities. Have thine own way, Lord, today in this service. And maybe an encouragement to those who mourn and who those who are here to support those who mourn. And today, even as your word is presented, we ask that the words would be an encouragement to everyone here present. And they would leave here knowing that there is a God who one day will come and scenes like this will be forever banished. So bless all that will transpire in this service today. Take the honor, the praise, and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. We continue with the hymn, And Can It Be? And can it be that I should gain 
and interest in the Savior's blood. Died he for me, who caused this pain, for me, who him to death pursued. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, Amazing love, how can it be? Just die for me. He left his father's throne above, so free, so infinite his grace. Emptied himself of all but love and bled for Adam's selfless race. Tis mercy all immense and free. Amazing love, how can it be? Just die for me, long my imprisoned spirit lay. Long my imprisoned spirit lay, fast bound in sin and nature's night. Thine I diffuse the quickening ray. I walk the dungeon flamed with light. My chains fell off, my heart was free. I rose, went forth, and followed thee. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? Oh, no condemnation now. No condemnation now I dread, Jesus and all in him is mine. Alive in him, my living head, and clothed in rye. Bold I approach the eternal throne. Amazing love, how can it be that thou, my God, shouldst die for me? Please be seated. Just before we have our first scripture reading by Maria, let me just remind you of the protocols. Um, you are still supposed to be seated at least three feet apart unless you are from the same household and we want you to please comply with that and we just want you to know um, for those of you who may need to use the bathroom facilities to my right uh, when you go through the entrance uh, on the right are the bathrooms for the males and on the left are the ones for the females and at the end of the service um, the family are very happy to have in support the cancer support services they're here today and they will be collecting a gift please when you make your exit today there are some receptacles uh, at the back I am not too sure if they're going to be held or placed there but they're going to be there you can feel free to make a contribution to the cancer support services and we would appreciate uh, a generous contribution 
on their behalf. Um, we will continue with the program, and it will continue unannounced, and all those who will officiate, um, they just officiate your ear, and there's some wipes. When you're done, you can just sanitize and drop it in the bin underneath just for the next person, and that will continue as the various items are rendered. Okay? God bless you. We continue with the hymn, How Great Thou Art. Please lend your voices as you sing, sing to God's honor and glory, proclaiming how great indeed he is. God, when I in awesome wonder consider all the works thy hands have made. I see the stars, I see the stars, I hear the mighty thunder, thy power throughout the universe display then everybody sings and sings then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art How great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees, when I look down, when I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle Oh, how great thou art! Then sings, then sings my My Savior God to thee Oh, how great thou art! How great thou art, then sings my soul, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. 
word and when I think and when I think that God his son not sparing sent him to die I scarce can take him in that on the cross that on the cross my burdens gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my everybody sing together the chorus then sings my how great thou art how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art oh one day christ shall come when christ shall come with shouts of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then i shall bow then i shall bow in humble adoration and they proclaim my God, how great thou art. Come on, everybody, sing the chorus together. My Savior God to thee. Oh, then he's the great God. How great thou art. How great thou art. Then sings my soul. my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art oh yes somebody ought to say hallelujah our god is indeed a great god amen please be seated for a video tribute after which we'll have our second scripture lesson. the second scripture lesson and give the video team a chance to get it cued which will be read by Ian Holder at this time the second, the second scripture reading is taken from Psalm 34 verses 1 to 9. I will bless the Lord at all times. His prayers shall continually be in my mouth. My soul, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. 
the angel of the Lord encampeth sound round about them that fear him and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no one to them that fear him. There end is the second reading. Okay, we will continue by having the eulogy by Adrian Bowen at this time. Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad that I came right after Ian, because I don't have to adjust the mic. If I came after Maria, I have to bring it right down. Good morning. I'm, I have the the duty of eulogizing my sister, Shirley, Shirley Patricia Boyne. The tribute, the video tribute would have um, words for many of us as we remembered her. Um, the tribute I'm about to read is a tribute that was written by her daughter. So I'm reading on behalf of Crystal Pennypoint. Like a comet blazing across the evening sky, gone too soon. Like a rainbow, Fading in the twinkle of an eye, gone too soon. Shiny and sparkly and splendidly bright, here one day, gone one night. Like the laws of sunlight on a cloudy afternoon, gone too soon. Like a castle built upon a sandy beach, gone too soon. My mom, Charlene Patricia Boyne, known affectionately as Shari to family, and friends was a star that died too soon. But during her since his three years, mom imparted the lives of many through her incredible cooking skills. And let me take a pause here. When you look at your programs, you're going to see mama's mahi mahi recipe. That's Shari, so keep, keep this because it's a small cookbook. Through her incredible cooking skills, community spirit and humility. She loved life, and while her journey was tough, she kept going even when she was faced with great physical pain and illness. Born on Thursday, October the 30th, 1958, mom was the first daughter and first child to Lionel Belfield Holder, also known as Balance, and Patricia Eudora Bowen. Her, her early home was located in Station Hill, St. Michael. Her parents' union created four more siblings, Carson, Lionel, Adrian, and Donna. And Donna, right. 
She also has three other siblings, which would be Hallam, Alicia, and Hortensia, the baby of the bunch. The family grew up in Bank Hall and St. Stephen's Hill slash KFL community. So the eulogy will give various, various stages as seen by, by Crystal. Mom's childhood growing up years. As the oldest mom was often tasked with running errands and going to the shop. She had many stories of the good old days, eating clamshires and playing picks up with other neighborhood children. A former student of the St. Stephen's Primary School, which is right below here, it used to be right below here. I was in secondary school and the Sabbath day Adventist secondary school. Mom was both a rebel and a leader. She told me that at primary school, she would use her negotiating skills to trade errands for treats. While at secondary, secondary school, her strengths really lied within mathematics and home economics. She boasted that she was so competent in the kitchen that in home economics, her teacher who, who recognized her leadership skill will let her teach the class in her absence. Mom was also opinionated, and she was not shy to speak her mind. She once told me she and the teacher had it when she decided to plot her here in thousands, which at that time was against the school rules. Despite having to undo the hairstyle, Mom still felt it was a win because she was able to plot it in thousands. She was strongly having her own identity and individuality. My mom was also a natural nurturer, as she would do whatever possible to spend time with her younger siblings. She was a big sister in the true sense of the word. Always there when she was needed, sometimes having to give a word of advice, or even sometimes a word of caution. She was particularly fussed about her little sister Donna, who she maintained a very close bond with. Employment. Mom had an interesting career path. Her first job was working in a bakery. She worked in the bed production area but eventually became a cashier. It was a job that combined her love for food and love of numbers. But the former had her heart. She became a talented saleswoman at the now defunct Bell Television. That used to be on Independence Square. I remember going there on the evenings to get lunch money for the following day from my big sister. After this business closed, Mom floated as a photographer helping my dad run his studio, Kingsley. At some point, she decided to open a shop in Peppers Avenue in the Bearland, and by 1986, she was not only an entrepreneur, but a new mother. Came along Crystal Penny. Mom, like everyone, faced new job opportunities and some losses also. Most people remember her working at the now defunct BJ's Cafe in Belleville and at the Wonderland Delhi, where she showed her capability to lead in the role of supervisor. Over the years, she also worked for Chef Glenn Bent, participated in meat preparation for World Cup 2007, worked at Hilton uh, Barbados, um, the construction site when it, was, when it was building, and she also kept the students and faculty satisfied at the UWI KFL campus cafeteria. With each experience, her confidence grew as a chef as a woman who can manage high, vo high volumes of pressure and stress. Having a passion for young people, she also worked with Paradox and a juvenile liaison scheme, helping troubled youth. But who was Sherry? My mom loved God, and it was reflected in the way she lived her life. She always believed in the saying, when you do good, good will attend you. Even when she faced tremendous hardship, Mom still gave her last with the belief and faith that God will help her through that difficult period. I took the time to Google values and a list of 20 words came up. Mom had them all, but she embodied the first 10 most. She was indeed loyal, spiritual, compassionate, honest, kind, full of integrity, 
selfless, humble, determined, and generous. On this list, the author of the article noted that your values can guide you through life no matter the situation. The article further stated that failure is, failure is failure to live by values while success is taking action every day to embody them. I can definitively say my mom's life was a success. The community of St. Stephen's Hill, Kefil, Davidale, also, also knew about mom's selflessness. My mom always had a kind, kind a community, a community spirited heart. In the last years, mom used her food to connect with others. She helped the elderly, she ran supermarket errands, paid bills, she would provide meals to anyone she knew and that, who had a need. She was, a, she was an amazing caregiver. I can remember my days studying 10 hours plus at UV, and mom popping in my room with some delicious meal. She would say, you need to eat or you will go mad. For mom, food was the answer to almost everything. She knew it made people happy. It brought people together, and it was a great way to show people how much she loved or appreciated them. Her hobbies, you can guess the first one. Mom loved to cook. All family members and close friends know this. Mom made delicious pudding, pudding and fish sauce. Let me repeat that. Pudding and fish sauce for her friend Ian Raphael Alcott every Saturday. Her homemade pizza was legendary in Clevedale, and a former landlady, Mrs. Barker, loved Mom's mellow cuckoo. My mother also made the best black cake around Christmas, and conkeys were also quite, and her conkeys were also quite scandalous, and truly the talk of the community. She was an extrovert that loved people. During the height of the pandemic, nothing impressed mom more than knowing that she was she had to stay inside. In her early years, she loved partying, going to the beach. She was a very strong swimmer. She loved dancing, and walking as a form of exercising. She was also a good photographer probably better than others. Some of my best photos of me were taken by my mom, and she was also a, a good painter as well, artistic. Mommy, or Sherry, also loved to listen to music, especially from the 70s and the 80s. Me too. One of my last good memories of mom is her, cook, is her cooking while singing to her favorite music. Any song from Teddy Pendergrass, Luther, Luther Vandross, Barry White, Barry Salmon, the OJs, and the list goes on. Her accomplishments. Mom told me about her deep relationship with the Seventh-day Adventist Church. She, lived, she relived every excursion and her face lit up whenever she spoke about helping build the very church we are, today, we are in today. As well as her love for singing her favorite hymns. One of her favorite hymns was, How Great Thou Art. She always carried God in her heart. And there it goes, just a minute. Technology. For me, mom was the mom of the century. She was everything to me. She was mom, dad, counselor, financial advisor, and best friend. Mom has a wonderful sense of humor and was a talented storyteller. And that she was. Her favorite phrases included hot mess. So to put it in a sentence, she was a hot mess. Which she actually stole from Crystal. That is Crystal's favorite. Uh, and the other one is, he or she isn't the smartest cookie. So whenever she said the last phrase, it always made Crystal laugh. Because she knew a ridiculous story was about to come. Mom was also a protector, and as old as I am, she never hesitated to look out for me. I remember as recently as, in Jan as January, she noticed coming home late at night by public transportation, and she still wanted to meet me at the bus stop. <laughs> mom was also mom to others.
She was a stepmother to my siblings, Chad, Sanjay, and Nicholas. She helped with raising her nieces and nephews, and during 2021, got a real opportunity to see her great niece learn and grow by babysitting her during the day. A role she adored as she shared daily videos of every moment with Naya. Naya sleeping, Naya eating, Naya. Naya, Naya every minute. I will cherish these videos and photos because it's the last time I can see my mom happy and hear a beautiful laugh. Looking after Naya was truly a full circle, full circle moment for mom. Because almost 30 years prior, she had looked after Naya's mom, Jamila. Mom believed in improving herself and did not allow circumstances beyond her control to set her back for long. Over the years, she attended classes to own in her accounting skills and completed a certificate in social psychology at Erdison Training College. I bet she's really part of my mom's career and her guidance in my upbringing. She was a single mother and she raised me to be a responsible, mature young woman who, despite the odds, attended university and graduated. Mom, I promise to live by your values and continue to uplift your name and your legacy. The life lessons. As mom closest family knows, mom had a tough few last weeks on this earth. Her illness was sudden and relentless. But from her hospital bed, she told her family, I'm going to be okay. I'm not afraid. Mom was truly brave, and despite her many traumas and hardships, she always dusted herself off and got up again. Her secret mind was never to give up. On Thursday, March 17th, mom passed away. The world lost an incredibly strong, resilient woman, a woman who had to navigate her ship and destiny by taking risks, having faith in God, and using her survival instinct. Mom was just mom. She was a lot of fun. And as the song goes, did you ever know that you are my hero? And everything I would like to be, I can fly higher than an eagle because you are the wind beneath my wings. Sleep in peace, Mom. Love you forever and always, Chrissy. On behalf of the family, I want to uh, thank everyone for their point of sympathy, the support, the kind words, your presence here today. And at the back of the program, it speaks to the fruits of this part. Love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control. And the greatest of these is love. And Sherry, may you rest in peace. We love you and we will always love you. Thank you very much. We will now have that video tribute.
Okay, we will have that special selection, therefore, by Ayana John, Wind Beneath My Wings. It must have been cold there in my shadows To never have sunlight on your face You were content to let me shine That's your way You always walked a step behind And I was the one with all the glory But you were the one with all the strength A beautiful face without a name for so long Beautiful smile to hide the pain. Did you ever know that you're my hero? And everything I would like to be. And I can fly higher than the need. Cause you are the wind beneath my wings No, I'm afraid it goes unnoticed But I've got this all here in my heart Cause I know you know you know the truth, of course you know it I would be nothing without you Did you ever know that you're my hero?
Thank you. Okay, they're having some technical issues with the video, so we will forego that in the meanwhile. Today, I just want to share some tributes that um, ma mention of some persons that. Crystal have highlighted to me from Saji Kaur, the Vice President for Marketing, Corporate Communications and Brand Experience, Ingrid Card, Kathy Ann Beckles, Manager of Digital and Social Media Marketing, Keisha Humphrey Mayors, Manager of Group Communications, Group CSR, the Clark family from Troll Plastics, Fair and Grand Bent of Kariba Restaurant, Aisha Hanif, Development Outreach and Communications Specialist, USAID, Eastern and Southern Caribbean, from Barbados Advocate, Sean Etienne, Assistant Managing Director, Natalie Brown, Human Resources Manager. She wants to express her appreciation and thanks to you at this time of bereavement. We are thankful also for her mom and other family who have traveled in from overseas. We thank God for bringing you safely. Trust that when you're ready to return, he will take you safely as well. My sympathy to the entire family as I share this message today. Trust it be a message of hope for all of us. I just got to know Sherilyn and Crystal um, about two months ago. As a matter of fact, um, just checking the correspond the WhatsApp communication, it was on the second of February um, that I went to visit Sherilyn. Prior to that, I had gotten a call, and I had made arrangements to visit her on that date. And it so happened that that was the first time that we connected. I remember Crystal taking me to her room, and I sat there with Sherilyn. We had a long conversation for about two plus hours. We just sat and spoke. And during the course of that time, she expressed to me all of the connections that she had over the years with Seventh day Venice, and it was her desire to formally become a member of the Seventh day Venice Church. But of course, we normally admit persons to our fellowship via baptism and professional faith for persons who are unable, incapacitated like she was, to get to the water to be baptized. We accept them on profession of their faith. That is the intention to be baptized, but since they cannot be baptized, Jesus accepts them on their profession. And we did that right by the bedside, and she did 
accept Jesus as her Lord and Savior. We had made arrangement that I would formally do it at the Ephesus Church there in Britain's Hill, uh, where I minister, and that was to be done on the 19th, and everything was set for the church. The church board had already accepted her. We were going to do it physically now, formally, by the entire congregation, but prior to that, we got the news that she had passed away. I still went to the church that same Sabbath, and I told them, and they unanimously agreed to do it posthumously. So even though we didn't get to do it while she was living, we still did it anyway. So officially, she is a member of this, was a member of the Seventh Adventist Church, and if she were well enough, she would have worshipped at the Ephesus Seventh Day Adventist Church. So even though we didn't get to do that, I'm glad that on the 2nd of February, uh, all heaven was present when she made her decision to give her life to Jesus Christ. I thought I would have heard a load of him of that. That's the best news that you can ever hear. Today, I have a message. It's not a long one, but I pray that it will be one that will be an encouragement to us. Bow your heads with me, please. Dear Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. A passage of scripture taken from the book of St. Matthew, chapter 7, the 13th and the 14th verses. And it reads thus, Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in there at. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Jesus is actually counseling his audience and by extension those of us in 2022 here present at the Black Rocks of Nevinus Church that there are two roads in life not a six lane highway two roads one leads to hell the other one leads to heaven and you and I are either on one or the other but Jesus counsel to them then and by extension to us today is please I can almost hear him pleading Enter in at the straight gate. And notice, this straight is not S-T-R-A-I-G-H-T. It is S-T-R-A-I-T. And the original Greek already says, it is restrictive. It is narrow. It is not broad. But Jesus says, look, that's the road that leads to life eternal. Get on it. Don't get on the comfortable one that is all accommodating. That leads to one place. Death and hell. And I'm here to tell you this morning, brothers and sisters, whether you choose to or not as a matter of fact one writer says it depends on the decisions that we make that we will feast at the banquet of our consequences that is a decision that every human being has to make for himself or herself so you can't be on the broad road or the broad way that leads to destruction 
and then somehow hope that you will end up in heaven no if you're gonna make it there you've got to intelligently decidedly of your own volition and accord make that decision to walk on the straight way you see brothers and sisters the straight road says look there's certain things that you can't do the broad road says look it's all accommodating you can do what you want you can live as you please you can go what you like go where you like eat what you like drink what you like curse who you like whatever you like like do it the, the vast majority Jesus says of the world's population choose that road I don't want to ask a rhetorical question this morning are you on that road this morning because if you are don't expect one day to hear from Jesus well done good and faithful servant he will either say well done or he will say depart from me I never knew you what is it that you want to hear when Jesus comes there are many persons who are of the opinion that hey you know I've always heard about the coming of Jesus and somehow it's gonna be somewhere distant there are many persons from even the beginning of time but I have learned to believe brothers and sisters that when my God says something it happens not necessarily in my time but in his time and it happens the world wasn't 6,000 years old yet but the Word of God says in the book of Genesis that every imagination of the thoughts of men's hearts will, was only evil continually in actual fact the world back in those day had come to a point where nobody could think a good thought what everything that they thought was only evil continually and god told no look build an ark because there's going to be rain you see prior to that there was never nothing called rain the earth was watered by a mist from beneath and all the weather forecasters of those day they, they, as, as no stood up and preached and said look that there's going to be rain they laughed him to scorn he doesn't know what he's talking about he didn't go and study meteorology how is it that it can be rain when there was never rain before but no preached that God would send rain from heaven and destroy the entire earth laughed at him to scorn but the time came and the animals without a guide just came from the various wooded areas two by two the clean ones here yeah. and the unclean ones the, the the unclean ones sorry by the twos male and female tiger and tigress lion and lioness going into the ark the clean ones by the sevens seven bulls and seven heifers and seven rams and seven ewes that's who ended the ark and only Noah and his family Noah and his wife his three boys and their wives and they remained in there for seven days with those animals and people passed by and laughed at them laughed at the scorn old man preached that there's going to be rain and then there's never rain but then you see brothers and sisters whatever God says it happens in his time while they were there in the ark all of a sudden the waters that God on that very first day of creation that covered the entire earth that God had not ordered to be dressed back into seas and rivers and lakes now burst their bounds and again cover the earth and for the first very first time they saw a dark cloud and all of a sudden the heavens opened and the waters rose from beneath and the waters came down and that boat that they thought would never sail because he built a boat on dry land it began 
to move and all of a sudden they wanted to get into the ark but it was too late I'm saying my brothers and sisters today look one of these days for you it will be too late the only safety is in Jesus but perhaps Sodom didn't learn from I mean those days didn't learn from the lesson wasn't passed down to Sodom and God said look that place had become real vile again as a bad you know the situation men same thing like probably in 2022 a lot went there And the angels came to tell him, look, this city is going to be destroyed. And the men of the city, the young men and the old men, came to Lot's house and tell them, look, we know that you got some men just coming there, send them out. We want them. We want to have sex with them. And God, Lot pleaded with them and said, look, I got a girl child here, look. She's a virgin, take her, ravish her. They said, we don't want women, we want men. That, that's what the world was back then. And that's how the world is right now. And my God, brothers and sisters, Lot barely got out. God told Lot, this family, look, don't even look back. Don't turn, the, don't even. And of course, Mrs. Lot had all her treasures back there. And when she got out to a place of safety, she just... And she froze into a pillar of salt on the very spot. I'm saying, brothers and sisters, look, Jesus is coming soon. Whether you believe it or not, all the signs around tells us what is happening in Ukraine and Russia, that may even get into a bigger conflagration. But I'm saying, my brothers and sisters, he has said all of these things, COVID and whatever else is lined up. But I'm saying, brothers and sisters, he has told us in advance, look, get on the straight a narrow path is going to lead you to life eternal yes brothers and sisters Jesus is coming again and I'll close by letting you know that when he comes 1 Thessalonians say chapter 4 from verse 13 says for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout not going to be a secret And with the voice of the archangel and the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. When Jesus Christ comes again the second time, not every dead man and woman and boy and girl in Coral Ridge or in Westbury Cemetery or in Mount Pleasant, not everyone will come up. Only those who have lived for and died in Christ. I'm asking you another rhetorical question today, brothers and sisters. How are you living today? Are you one of those persons that have been procrastinating with your soul salvation? For the longest while you've been saying, well, okay, one of these days. I was saying to someone just recently, you know, we grew up saying, you know, you're here today, you're gone tomorrow. But since COVID came, you had to change that. You're here today, you're gone tomorrow, you're here today, you're gone today. That's the frailty of life. You and I are just a breath away from death but the good news is that all those who have made a commitment to jesus christ and accept it accept him as their lord and savior yes we will die like anybody else from cancer and all the other things but the good news is once we've accepted jesus christ as our lord and savior when he comes on resurrection morning in color ridge and westbury cemetery christ church cemetery all the cemeteries of the world all those who have lived and died in him will be the first to come up from the grave for the lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel and the trump of god and the dead in christ in actual fact brothers and sisters there's some graves in coral ridge that will not budge on resurrection morning there's some graves in westbury that will not be disturbed on, re on, on resurrection morning there's some graves in whatever cemetery you are buried in will not be disturbed on resurrection morning and i want to ask a rhetorical question again will you be in one of those graves that will not budge or would you be in one of those that have accepted jesus christ and will hear his voice and come forth all of these are decisions you make 
today, not tomorrow. One ready says procrastination. Put it off is the thief of time. You ain't got tomorrow put down. I don't have tomorrow put down. Charlene didn't have it. And she's here today. But I'm glad that she made that decision. And the good news is, brothers and sisters, when it comes to Jesus, you can make it at the 11th hour. Once you come, his arms are wide open to receive you just like he received her. You too. Very soon, Jesus is going to come. The word of God says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then all those who are alive will be caught up. All of a sudden, gravity will lose its hold, and they will be caught up, 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 up. To the third heaven, Paul says, I know a man who was caught up to the third heaven. Now, if there's a third heaven, there must be a first and a second. Of course, we consider the atmosphere where the birds fly and the planes fly. That's the first heaven. And then the second heaven where the stars and the galaxies are. But then there's the third heaven where Jesus, where God himself resides. No man can get there. Elon Musk can't take you there. Richard Branson can't take you there. I don't care how deep your pocket is that you can pay for one of those all that can take you to is just in the first heaven and look back down here but when jesus comes and the good news is you have to have a pretty penny to get up in one of those crafts but the good news is your flight has already been prepared amen all you have to do is make yourself available you don't have to book note you don't have to get into any aircraft when Jesus comes, gravity is going to lose its hold. You're going to be caught up in the air to meet the Lord in the air. And the writer says, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. I, I, want, to, I want to go to heaven. That's my dream. And I want to help as many persons. That's why I, I, I share with you the gospel so passionately. Because I would love to know. I don't know if I'm going to get you to see you again. But I would love to know that something has sparked your heart that moving from here you have purpose in your heart to make it right with God and to book your passage for heaven. You see, brothers and sisters, because I know that my God, every promise that he has made, he's able to keep. And he keeps them. Finally, his friend Lazarus had died. One writer says that when Lazarus was dead Jesus was summoned but he came four days after Lazarus had died you see there was a popular notion back then in Jesus day that the many other persons that he had brought back to life the widow's son at Nain and others Jairus's daughter that those were kind of flukes because back then a lot of people used to be sometimes buried comatose so the general rumor was that jesus just happened to turn up the right time when they came out of the coma so he didn't do anything spectacular so when he heard that his friend was sick and then he died jesus came four days as a matter of fact you remember the word of god says that when he came martha said but jesus he's thinking if now you too late don't bother it's too late. Decomposition has already set in. He's rotting. There's not anything that you can do. You can't do anything now, Jesus, she was saying. And Jesus says, show me where you've laid him. He went into that cemetery where Lazarus, his friend, was. And just to make the point, Lazarus that was dead for four days, I don't know how long Charlie will be by the time he comes. It could be four years. Or four thousand years it doesn't make a difference with Jesus Ezekiel saw a vision and all he, all he saw was a, a, a valley of dry bones and God asked him a question Ezekiel can these bones live Ezekiel said you know God I, I don't know you know and Ezekiel stood there and he saw all of the various bones and I'm amazed you know having done so many funerals you you, you see um, little um, 
bags or whatever when they have to dig out probably if i remember who was buried five or six years ago and they put those bones there and, and in the process of covering up again they throw them back in there and you know i don't know how many persons how many family members would have been in that grave but my jesus he knows how to separate bones amen he saw that and ezekiel saw the head bone and the neck bone and the shoulder bone and the arm bones and the hip and all the bones start coming back together and he saw out of a mass of confusion he saw everything being formed together because my god can do that and if he did it then he will do it again so I'll leave that up to him all you need to do today my brothers and sisters get on that straight road you can't live as you like them you can't drink your rivers dry and walk on that road you can't be a, a, every cop fight you can't be living with somebody who's not your husband or your wife and be on that road Th that's why many people want the broad road because you can do as you like and then go in church and that's it and then go back and do it again you can't live on the street you can't be on the straight road and every could do with ban you in you can't be on the straight road so you got to make some choices there's some things that you got to say goodbye to if you're going to walk on that straight road but if you want to you know pretend that you you know want to serve your lord and you know you're you're in the house of your lord and then when these things come around say lord give me a little time out here i'll go in here and come back one of these days you may good him not get back get on that straight road and my prayers brothers and sisters that when the road is called up yonder that you we get to see Charlene again because the road that you've taken is the road that she took the decision that she made to walk in that straight road and that you'd be privileged to live and reign with Jesus no more sickness no more cancer no need for cancer support services we need them now though that's why you need to give them a contribution as you go, back, go through the door I gave mine before I came in do, you, do yours as you go out I'm saying, when Jesus comes, no more sickness, no more pain. We even want the undertakers. Them going with the business. Only the upper taker, Jesus Christ. My prayers that this entire family, Crystal and all mommy and siblings and everybody, that your life will be so lived, that when the role is called up yonder, that you would hear from Jesus, well done good and faithful servant enter into the joy of thy lord may the lord bless you and comfort you is my prayer in jesus name let us pray father we give you thanks today for your word which is still a lamp to our feet and a light to our paths i pray to god that today that the family will be comforted by the fact that our dear sister Sherilyn made that commitment, that surrender to you. And that today, Lord, they can rest with the assurance that when Jesus comes again the second time, he will call her by name, Sherilyn, Patricia, come forth. May we order our lives according to your will as well, so that we too can be privileged to hear, well done, when you come. Bless us now to this end, even as we leave, to go to the place of interment. Grant us safe travel, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand as we sing together the hymn, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit. This is my story. 
This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of rapture. Angels descending, angels descending, bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission.
My sister was my protector with an unbelievable fierceness that no matter my age I was always introduced as her baby sister and a subtle threat followed depending on the situation. I always felt safe with her even on that eventful day in 1982 when we got into difficulty while swimming behind the Hilton Hotel. My sister was my teacher, especially in the kitchen and inadvertently she also taught me not to walk on the white part of the zebra crossing when it's raining and never try to negotiate with a centipede which end is the head or tail especially with bare feet. My sister was my confidant and willingly listened to my dreams, fears and problems without judgment. My sister was my counsellor with a pragmatic approach that kept me grounded. My sister was my friend, one I could call on anytime. In December 1997, as I was heading to the hospital to give birth to my last son Jabari on Christmas Eve, all that was required was one call. When we were discharged on Christmas Day, I returned home to a house completely put together and a full Christmas bread, including great cake. The last time I thanked her for being there for me and my family was Christmas Eve 2021. My sister was my cheerleader. She always expressed pride at any achievement, big and small. My sister is my awesome hero. On that last Thursday as I read Psalm 23 and she raised and pumped her fist, though unable to communicate otherwise, I knew she would be okay and that she was not afraid. She was winning the race. I miss you, Sherry. I love you, Sherry. You won the race. Rest in perfect peace, sis. My big sister, Sherry, was kind. She was loving and thoughtful. She was simply amazing. She would take simple food and by the time she was finished, not only was it now tasty and delicious, but beautiful to look at as well. I believe I make a mouth-watering curry and I owe all that to my sis who showed me many years ago her secret ingredient. She wasn't only kind to me, she was a, also very caring to my children, Tayrona and Tayrona. She would often pass my house on the way to the shop and on her way back stopping with a little treat for them, apples, bananas, oranges, etc. She would bake them goodies and sometimes cook them a whole entire meal. She loved hard. Just the thought of her being gone is too difficult to fully process. Who will now tell me all those stories about my other siblings? Who will offer the advice I only she could? To say I miss my sister is not enough. Gone way too soon. Hi, good morning all. As I sit here reflecting on Sherry, big sister um, you know there's so many so many thoughts going to my mind but I do remember Sherry for a number of things um, one is for sure being my big sister she always introduced me as her baby brother and even though I was going to school um, she would let me come down to Bell TV during Independence Square uh, to collect lunch money or over to her home which is in Promenade Road by how to collect lunch money before I go up to school at Common Mirror. Um, even as an adult, you know, she would call me and ask me, um, Rohan, uh, what are you doing? Every time you leave leaving work, um, I have something for you. When I go, it would be uh, pizza or some kind of dish or some kind of food, and, you know, and, and that was the kind of person she was. She was also an excellent storyteller. Um, Sherry knew the history of our family very well. And she had stories on top of stories. And every story she told was captivating. <laughs> as simple as the story might have been, she had a way of making it very captivating. Uh, my son Duran reminded me of a time we went there Christmas morning. And Sherry uh, regaled us with stories, man, that we, we, we couldn't even get out of the, the apartment. Uh, because she just, she just has so many stories. So, Sherry, I love you. Um, I miss you. May you rest in peace. Hi, 
Nicolette here. Auntie Cherie's Beyonce. Um, the best moment I had with Auntie Cherie will be when I came home from the hospital after giving birth to my first son. Auntie was so excited. And she came and she spent the day with me. We had a long conversation about nothing motherhood and stuff and honestly I really appreciated that and auntie was everything that you could have wished for in an aunt and she was always oh my god so loving auntie your Beyonce is gonna miss you and love you auntie this is Lena or Junie my sister was a wonderful lady she was dedicated to her daughter she loved life she was very special and yet she was very simple there's so much worse that I can say but um all I can say that may she rest in peace and rise in glory. My sister was an amazing chef. I would brag to everyone about her culinary skills. Around five years ago I reached out to Sherry to ask her for a black cake recipe. Although I live in the States, I still want to be connected to things that matter to me and my culture. So I reached out to her and asked her for a recipe. That recipe has served me very well for Christmas after Christmas. I actually used it um, last Christmas and that is a way that I can say I really appreciate and love her. My first child, a daughter, Charlene Patricia Boyne, was born on the 30th of October, 1958. She was, a beautiful, she was beautiful from the day she was born, beautiful both inside and out. She was a mother to her siblings at an early age. As she grew, she also realized that one of the things she delighted in, which was her calling, was cooking. She turned her attention to that, determined to be the best she could be. Sherry was a loving daughter, mother, sister, cousin, and friend. She went out of her way to help whomever she came in contact with. Sleep, my daughter, until that great getting up morning. That's the smallest boy, Arlene, in the group. Among my siblings, my big sister, Charlene, was like, to me, when I first met her, she instantly reminded me of my mom. Because she seemed so big and she seemed just like my mother. But I can say her, outside of her being a fantastic cook, she was a great storyteller she was full of laughter and when she laughed it was infectious but she taught me i would say three things she taught me about hard work compassion and courage as i always know my sister she was always working trying to Make that dollar trying to provide, and she was always on the go. I never know her to be anything else. She was always playing work. When my father passed, she was one of the first persons that came and showed support on the day that my father passed, and. It was like she just appeared on the blue there to be that support for us. Um, they, they, even though my father wasn't her father, you know, she, 
the type of sister Sherry was. She was there with all the love and support instantly. As she battled this illness, one of the things she said to me when the last night we had a conversation, she said to me, Erling, tell everyone, I am not afraid. Do not worry about me. I am not afraid. Do not worry about me. And she held my hand firmly, like the strongest she ever held my hand. And it reassured me that, you know, she had, was at a place that she was willing to face whatever had to come. So one of the three things I can say that my sister left with me in Delaware Mark is hard work, compassion, and courage. That was the type of sister, my sister, Sheridan Patricia Boyd was. May she rest in peace. Hi, Jamal here. Auntie Sherry, Auntie Sherry is my Auntie Sherry. <laughs> my second mom, the person who inflated my head and made me believe I could do anything in this world. I loved to hear my aunt's laughter and I think that's kind of what drove me to kind of be the family comedian because I love to make Auntie Sherry laugh. I remember many nights staying with Auntie Sherry and Crystal, getting to stay up way past my usual bedtime to watch all kinds of shows. And I really enjoyed this one show, The Pretender, because Auntie Sherry was convinced that her nephew was the living likeness of the main protagonist because he could do anything he put his mind to. Anything. I just would take glee in hearing Sherry say with pleasure. Jamal, you just like that man, Jerry. You could do anything that you see want. And I think that carried with me through my entire life. And I just want to say thank you, Sherry. Thank you for everything you did for me, for the family. I hope that I can just be half as good as you as I continue to grow. Love you, love you always. Thank you for everything, Auntie Sherry. What I really love about my mom was that she was always present. No matter what, she would always come to you and, and ask what's wrong, what's the matter, and she will just try to be there for you, comfort you and advise you on what's the best thing to do. Or sometimes she just listen. You know, sometimes she might agree with what you have to say, but she will listen to you and she will be really supportive and everything. She trusts that you will make the right decision. And, um, you know, I, I think that's one of her things that really stands with me. I'm going to miss our chats. I'm going to miss her story. She always had a lesson to share and a story to share. And um, I, think, I think that was what made her the incredible person that she is because she was so resilient. She has been through so much and I really gonna miss that beautiful spirit that she had. She was amazing, she was creative, she was smart, she was funny, mom had the best jokes and she always made me smile. Um, she was really an incredible person. I love you mom. <laughs>